Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to my cybersecurity show. I know it has been a while, but I'm glad to have everybody back here. And uh, a big thank you to the faithful that always tune in, like, and do all that lovely stuff. Comment. You know how much I love that stuff. So uh, what are we doing today? Well, I figured it's been a while. Actually, I just got back from Wild West Hacking Fest where I got my cool shirt, right? Black Hills. Woot, woot. A lot of fun up there in South Dakota and the Black Hills information security folks that put on Wild West Hacking Fest. Shout out to them. Go check out John Strand's anti-siphon training because it's awesome. Uh, also got to hang out with great folks and friends of mine like Jerry Ozier and uh, Josh Mason from Simply Cyber. Super, super great guys. Super great stuff. You want to check out their stuff as well. Uh, who else did I hang out with? I saw John Hammond out there. Always a great time hanging out with John. We got to, uh, you know, chat a little bit about what's going on in his world, what's going on in mine, and uh, just getting the band back together. It was a lot of fun. Who else did I see? Tons of people. I mean, honestly, I could I could just go down. Heath Adams from TCM, uh, Zach Hill as well, uh, Joe Hudson. I just did a, a webinar with him today. So it, it, it's, it's really like a family community there. So it was a lot of fun. It was very motivating for me to come back, get in the hot seat, make something for you guys. So what are we doing today? That's the question. The question is answered with the answer of Port Swigger Academy or the Web Security Academy, I believe it's called. So Port Swigger, people that make Burp Suite, let's go check them out. Right here it is. I've got this a little uh, blown up in size because I want you to be able to see it, uh, <laughs> right? But I've gotten logged in. So definitely create yourself an account. So just go to portswigger.net, create an account. Once you get logged in, you'll probably see something more along the lines of, well, hello, there it is. This, you find that Academy button right here, I believe. What did, did I, nope, there it is, right around there. And click that, which will take you to the Web Security Academy, and from there, you can start your track. Now, what I thought to do was, hey, there's a few tracks, right? Because they want you to get to become, what do they call it? Um, I forget. They've got a name for it. Here we go, right? Practice exam. I thought they tell you, practitioner. They're trying to get you ready for their Burp Suite certification exam. And they have a name for it, but I don't see it anywhere on here. But that's neither here nor there. What we're looking for is this one, The Apprentice. I've started The Practitioner, apparently I got busy and stopped because <laughs> that's what happens in my life. And I thought, let's do all, uh, what I wanna do is demo all the labs, let's do a walkthrough of all the labs in The Apprentice track. Because that's, that's all the basic stuff and this is gonna be great for you noobs out there. That's not pejorative, right? That's not a slight on you to be a noob. I'm a noob at a lot of things. You're a noob. We're all noobs in some way, shape, or form. Let's just embrace our noobiness and move on and leave it behind once we've learned something new, right? And that's what we want to do. So that's what I want to do with this. I thought that'd be a lot of fun and uh, a way for me to give back to the community because I'm all about trying to help people level up, skill up, get better, faster, uh, faster stronger. And the Port Swigger Web Security Academy is a phenomenal resource to get you going in web app pentest web app pen testing or uh, bug bounty and that kind of stuff, right? So once you get all logged in, you got your account and everything squared away, you just start that track, that apprentice track. I'm gonna hit resume. And like I said, I'm not gonna go through the learning modules. I am gonna do all the labs. And from here, we have our first lab and this is the file path traversal simple case, which is cool. Now. A couple of ways in which you could solve this, you can use something like Port Swigger's Burp Suite Community, or if you have Burp Suite Pro, knock this out. If you got Burp Suite Pro, I assume you're probably already pretty squared away on how to do this kind of thing. Maybe not, but most likely because you're paying money for a tool you don't know how to use or the concepts behind it. It doesn't make a lot of sense. So you're probably using Burp Suite Community, which is preloaded in Kali Linux. I think it's preloaded in uh, Parrot and other pen testing distros, other security focused Linux distributions. It runs on Windows. You can you can slap it on anything, right? So go grab that if you don't have it and let's get rocking. But what I'm gonna use is just the web browser itself to solve this. All right, so I'm gonna hit the, oh, oh there's some reading to do. Don't forget to read, always read. And it does say, this lab contains a path traversal vulnerability in the display of product images. Very important. 
So yeah, they're going to hold our hand a little bit, but that's fine, right? Because we're trying to get started, get our feet with nothing wrong with that. But we'd have some helps. A, we know this is going to be a path traversal vulnerability because it says so right there. And we know it's going to be in the display of product images. Normally, you're going to have to like scour through stuff, look at code, source code, you know, right click, view source, that kind of stuff. Proxying everything through Burp Suite or Zap or whatever you you, you have. Uh, and, and, and looking for that piece of knowledge and figuring out, oh, this might be a path traversal. But for here, we, we have that hand-holding thing. Well, that's fine. To solve the lab, retrieve the contents of Etsy password. As we should know, Etsy password is the file in Nix type system. So Unix and Linux. Uh, Mac OS runs BSD, I believe, under the hood. This is, is a, a Unix variant. Or it, it is Unix, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, um, and that file, that Etsy password. So in the Etsy directory, there's a file called PASSWD or password. And in that file contains all the users for that system. It's typically world readable, not world writable. If you find it writable, boy, you found a good thing. Well, you found a bad thing, which is a good thing if you're a pen tester or something. A bad thing for that organization. So we're going to hit access the lab. Access, I feel like that's a weird word. Access, access. Okay, access the lab. Access the lab. <laughs> How do you say that? My, my brain is going crazy. And here we have a shop, an e-shop, right? Yeah. Uh, High-end gift wrapping at $19.53. View the details. We got uh, what do you mean? Looks like a, a game. Got this weird thing. It looks like a barbecue suitcase. Plenty of items to tantalize the mind and occupy the whatever. <laughs> the mind. <laughs> But that's not what I'm here for. I'm here to do a path reversal, right? So there's going to be a lot of dot, dot, slashy stuff. I'm going to hit view details. And this opens the page for this product, which is high-end gift wrapping. I guess it's a service. <clears throat> and okay. Now, sometimes you might see this up in the URL, right? Here in the address bar, there might be like, you know, image equals or file equals or something equals. And we do see product ID equals one right around this region, right? And that could be it. I mean, heck, well, you know, we can just try it here. Dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash. Whoa, too many dots, Daniel. Slash, dot, dot, 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 slash, dot, dot, slash. You're like, whoa, you're getting crazy with dot, dot, slashes, kid. What are you doing? Uh, I'm just trying to make sure that I back up far enough because I don't I don't know where I am in this this tree, okay? So I'm just you can't have too many; it won't hurt. So just get buck wild with the dot dot slashes just to make sure you get out of there. And then from there, you know, you do your your file, the one I'm looking for. I'm actually going to go with hosts so I don't solve the the thing yet. So I'm going to do hosts, hit enter, and you'll notice I'm not getting. I'm not getting that. I can hit raw data. I can, you know, it's just telling me, hey, this this wasn't right. I don't know what you're doing. I'm like, okay, my bad. So I know it's not that. It might be SQL injection. I, I don't know. But that's not what we're here for. That's another video, right? We'll get there. So if it's not there, remember it said it was in the product, right? If we go back to the this here, right? Not the product. Yeah, the product image. In the display of the product image. Now, if I was using something like Burp Suite, like a pro, like an, uh, an attack proxy, Z attack proxy from OWASP, something to that effect, I could be looking at my HTTP uh, request history and seeing all that stuff. And I would, I would see also the returns that come back, the things that are returned to us. Obviously, when we requested this page, it returned an image. Well, that sounds a lot like what they were just telling us. So... I, I want to know what that is. I can, what I can do is I can right click on this image and click inspect. And that will open up the web developer tools. And if you're in Chrome, it'll be a, similar but different, right? It should be a, a similar enough that you're probably able to follow the bouncing ball. I'm not a Chrome user. I don't really like Chrome that much. <clears throat> I've, I've been using Firefox for forever. So that's that's what I'm using. You'll notice it highlighted the line of the image, like this is this is basically the code where it's calling 
for that image to be displayed in the page. And I can see that here. Image source, here's the, here's the HTML or JavaScript. Image source equals, I guess this is HTML, equals image question mark, which means query for a file name. And that file name equals 53.jpg. And that 53.jpg file is this image of this bike, right? And you can see it pops up if you hover over it. What if, what if we change that to a different file right here and then resend? Will, will that work? Let's find out. So I will just double click on that and I will come over and I will remove 53.jpg and type in dot dot slash 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 and then dot, wait for it, dot, and then finally another slash. Again, arbitrary amount of dot dot slashes just trying to back my way out of whatever directory I'm in so that I can go back down into Etsy and grab that host's file, hit enter. You'll notice it it redid the page here, but I, I don't seem to be seeing an Etsy hosts file. Actually, I see this broken link eh, for the image, right? The image didn't display. I'm like, dang, okay, well, let's, let's view page source, see if anything's in there. And yeah, it just shows me that same source code of file name equals 53.jpg. Okay. So that didn't work. That's cool. By the way, I didn't prep this. I don't, I don't remember exactly where. I do know where my next stop is though. Since that did not exactly work for me, I'm going to run over here to this network tab right around this region. Click on that. And you'll notice there is that that file. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm going to refresh the page so that reloads. I want I want to see all the stuff. I want to see all that goodness coming here. And I can see that it through this. Now I am probably highlighting images, but normally you'll probably be on all and it'll show you everything that got requested when you clicked go to that link. All the pages that got requested came from there. And you'll notice I got this right here, this little lovely get request for that file. So if I right click on it, I believe it has, yep, right there, edit and resend. I wanna edit that and resend. Yes, enhance. So now you just click on that, I'll remove 53.jpg, and of course, dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash dot slash dot slash dot slash dot slash dot slash. And then Etsy slash, heck I'll go for it, why not, password and hit send. Then we'll come over here. We will look at this. There's the request headers. And I think what I want to do here is go to the request. No, I want to see the response, which gave me that, which did not work. Interesting. So that tells me I need to intercept that request. I thought I did this with the, uh, this has been a while since I've done this by the way, but I could have swore I was able to do this without a proxy, but maybe I don't. Maybe I absolutely need that proxy. Oh, wait, look at that. This says lab solved right here. So it actually did work. <laughs> But we didn't get to like we didn't get to see it, right? It says congratulations, you solved the lab. Yay. So this actually works as far as like solving the lab, but we don't actually get to see what we did. Well, I can't see where we could see it. Uh what if I right click view page source? Will that show up? No, it still shows that file name, but that's cool. I really just wanted to see that come back and not just give me this. I don't know why it's doing that. There's probably some Trying to think of something. Yeah. Who are we to look a gift horse in the mouth throw, right? We we did solve the lab. Congratulations. Very anticlimactic, but a win nonetheless. What I'll do is because I, I, I want to see this done a different. I'll come back, I'll make another video, and we'll see how to do it with an attack proxy like Burp Suite. So definitely stick around for that. But other than that, hey, look at us. We are winners of the day. We have defeated. The worthy foe that was path traversal. We climbed up 
mount path, traversed back down, and found that that password file. Probably actually worked when we did it in the um, inspector. <laughs> but since I didn't go for Etsy password, and I went for Etsy host and said it didn't register as being a win, but it was. And that's, that's a really good uh, lesson for us to take away. Just because you think something didn't work doesn't mean it didn't work. You might just have done it. You just might not realize you've done it. It does happen from time to time. So that's an interesting thing. Like I said, if you're a newbie, you, you're looking at nothing and going, oh, it didn't work. But maybe it did. And that's why it can be helpful to be able to use multiple different tools to see if that stuff is actually worked or if it's working or not. So I will make another video, like I said, but this time we'll use Burp Suite to solve the same problem or the same lab and see if we can actually see anything and visualize our win a little bit better. That said, all right, everyone, thanks for watching. I don't want to keep you too long. And it's been a lot of fun. It's been getting back in the seat there. So I look forward to seeing an upcoming you know, series here. Until then, keep hacking.